Hello guys, I know I've joked about this before, but now it's actually going to be happening. That should be good now. Now I know I said this before, back in 2019, that I would be doing a video similar to it, uh, but with a different title. Also, I'm planning on having a new series on my channel. It's a parody, okay? It was originally going to be canon review, but I think now we should go. We should open up to all cameras out there. Instead of it being called canon review, I have now changed the name to camera review, where we kill cameras faster than PewDiePie killing memes. Okay, maybe not quite. But today we'll be taking a look at the first camera, which surprisingly, for episode one, why not have it be the first camera that I have used on this channel? The Canon EOS T5. Well, in this case, it's the Canon EOS Rebel T5. Yeah, that's right, a lot of my videos on here was actually filmed on this camera. This is my first, like, digital camera, I guess you can call it. SLR, DSLR. Whatever the fuck you want to call it, I don't care. So, we're going to be going through the good, the bad, and the ugly of this particular camera, right here. Also, today is Mother's Day, so if you want, we can determine whether your mother would want this or not. So sit back and relax, and well, hopefully you enjoy. This is going to be an interesting video, and uh, will this be a series? Uh, I don't know, maybe, probably, I don't know, we'll find out. So yeah, enjoy. Now, I'm going to try to sound completely unbiased on this review. <laughs> and again, since when was PewDiePie unbiased when doing meme reviews? But continuing on, the Canon EOS Rebel T5, or if you live outside of the US, then it's the Canon EOS Rebel 1200D. The camera was introduced in the year 2014, and the sensor size is 22.3 by 14.9 millimeters. So take that as you will. The pixel dimension is 5,184 by 3,456. The diffraction limited aperture is an f-stop of 6.9. I'm not joking when I say that, by the way. And the aspect ratio that it can shoot to, or it shot, is 3 by 2. I know, crazy. The lens mount can either be an EF, EFS, TSE, or MPE. The image processor is a digit 4, so just keep that in mind. Now, this camera is actually really well good for beginners. It's an astounding camera when it comes to taking photos. Here are some sample photos that apparently I took when I actually used the camera. Of course, a lot of these are pretty old and outdated, but hey, at least I won a prize. To be completely honest by what I mean by I won a prize, I'm actually being serious when I say this. Right there is actually a, uh, an award that I got for, uh, for a competition that our school was having. Our school was having this competition and, well, it was a photo competition and I ended up winning. We were competing against 28 schools and I managed to get third place by this photo right here. Now on four, as you can see, it has, it has my name in the back if I show you in the mirror, if you can even see that. Yes, but on top of that, it also has my phone number, so I should probably not show that. But as you can see, this is the photo that got me in third or second place. I didn't get first place, but I got third, third, um, and or second place, somewhere around there, with this photo that I took. And that's what led me to get that award over there. So there it is. It was, uh, an interesting one before I owned the 70D, and, you know, it was pretty cool. I don't want to take it down because it's a pain in the ass for me to do. I'm slowly tripping on my stuff Ugh. I was buying that was back in 2016 before I even owned the 70d so that's pretty cool so uh yeah all right cool but overall the Canon Rebel T5 is a perfect camera for beginners of photography it's astounding and just like I showed you earlier it takes some pretty good photos and as Canon has advertised before it can do video and why yes it can do video I've used this camera for videoing stuff in the past previously those that are old OGs to my channel know that I've used this camera for vlogging and whatnot. Now for those that want to buy this camera for video as well, let me just hold you off for just a bit because this camera isn't really the best when it comes to recording video. Like I said, we're going to be reviewing the good, good the, the bad, bad and the, the ugly, ugly of this particular camera right here.
Now, the camera, when, when, when it comes to video, you're pretty limited to what you can and cannot do. I mean, from my experience, at least. But when it comes to just basic, simple video, it does the job done. It's an alright video camera, and it gets the job done for basic video, I guess. So if you just want to do some basic footage, you know, nothing too complicated or anything like that, you know, just some good still video shots, and this camera is actually pretty good. It's It gets the job well done. The battery and SD card slots are at the bottom. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but uh, if I didn't, then they're there. But if you want to, like, step up your game a little bit when it comes to video, because if you want to step up your game when it comes to photography on this camera, you could just get yourself a different lens. Uh, because everything on there, for photo-wise, is completely fantastic. But if you want to amp up your game when it comes to videoing on this thing, I would at least recommend to uh, just get a different camera for that, or just a video camera, and here are the reasonings why. I should probably put this in other words, um, to not just you know, just <laughs> upgrade to a different camera because, of course, not a lot of people would have the money to do that, but just save up to get a different camera. There we go. Yeah, that, there we go. Yeah. So the following footage is kind of going to explain my personal opinion, but I'm going to clarify some things if some of them don't make sense. But they do point out some flaws with the, with the T5 in, in its recording. Keep in mind, I didn't purchase this camera. This was actually given to me. So I got it as a gift. And for the past year, I loved it for photos and whatnot. But I realized that it wasn't the best for video, for my opinion at least, and for probably others as well. But just hear me out. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously, the T5 or the Rebel T5 is not a bad camera. One thing that I really didn't like from my experience is the lens. Now this is basically their kit lens. It's an 18 to 55 millimeter lens so it's actually not that bad. Again it's good for beginners and whatnot and it gets the job done for photos but again there were some flaws to it when it came to video. Now don't get me wrong the T5 is by no means a bad camera but one of its major flaws that I know a lot of people had was the lens. Now, for the lens itself, the lens is a, it's a pretty fairly good lens. It's an 18 to 55 millimeter lens, and like I said before, it's great for beginners. One big flaw about this lens right here is the fact that you can hear the autofocusing. Don't get me wrong, this camera is really well good for photography, but when it comes to video, it's a whole different story. This camera not the best for video <laughs> and also keep in mind that when you use this camera you have no autofocus while filming meaning that you're probably gonna have to film everything in manual focus or have to hear this I hate that noise still God. so a couple of flaws of what I was saying earlier to basically clarify myself is that as you can see it looks pretty focused but when I zoom in as you can see, it's kind of out of focus and kind of fuzzy. And uh, there's no really good way to autofocus this because you cannot autofocus mid filming. A perfect example of this is when you're focusing on something, something that's pretty close up, but once you step away from that frame, it refuses to actually, you know, autofocus back. It can focus from my hand pretty well, but it won't autofocus. And so, because it won't autofocus, you know, to here, that's why most, that's why I, at the time, would recommend switching it to manual focus and then manually focusing it like that. But one thing as well is that when you're recording with this camera, there is no mic jacks. You cannot input any sort of microphone onto this camera. Now, that is true. You cannot input any sort of microphone onto the camera. I originally thought that the input was a, mi a microphone input until I realized that it wasn't, and it was for another way to click on the shutter button when far away. Pretty neat concept, but wasn't a mic, and kind of was disappointed a little bit. A lot of audio I had to use had to be like from an external microphone, or just like from my phone mic, because if I were to be far away from like, let's say a tripod or something like that, like this tripod, I had to like, um, I had to bring like a phone or a separate type of microphone with me, because this T5 did not have you know, a microphone jack, so, yeah. This camera is by far a bad camera 
for filming. When, when you record with this camera, if you were to set this to manual focus for you to focus in for videoing, you will actually hear you will hear that. Same thing with the zooming. This zoom mechanism is so loud that you will actually hear it. This 18 to 55 millimeter lens, I like to say that it's probably good for a beginner for photography, but when it comes to video, it's just complete trash. So when zooming in and out, you can actually hear the lens. And that was kind of getting annoying as time went on as I recorded or kept on recording video and whatnot. Which is why I decided to put a different lens on this camera because I hated the previous one. At least now when I zoom in and out, you don't hear it that much. And with this, and when focusing, you really can't hear it. Yes, as, uh, as I eventually ended up getting uh, the 70D along the lines, I ended up getting another lens, which was the 18 to 155 or something like that, yeah. Uh, and I put that onto the T5 because I knew I would probably use it uh, again still for videoing. So I just put that lens onto that camera and it worked out pretty well. And uh, I still have that lens on to the camera to this day. So it's good to get a different lens while you're at it. Also, this may affect only a few people that do video, but there is no flip screen. So if you were to film by yourself and, you know, you need some focusing or some autofocusing, you just won't be able to have that option. Of course, this camera wasn't designed for that, but the fact that it was advertised to also be video camera, it's kind of kind of interesting to see the missing functions that a lot of people take for granted. Well, I wouldn't say take for granted, but I mean, like, you know, you know what I mean, I hope. <laughs> so, after all that, what are my final ratings about the whole thing? Now, to be fair, there are some interesting... There are its ups and downs and flaws and ups. I generally do have to say that it's a pretty good camera for some beginners out there. It has its ups and it has its downs and whatnot, but overall... It's a decent camera. I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10 for the photography side. Then for the video side, um, more or less like a 4 out of 10. Given the fact that you can do basic things for video, but you have a lot of things that you can't, that the camera's not capable of doing, or just features that you just don't have. So overall, we got a 6 out of 10 for the photography side, because, you know, it's not the best, but it's also not the worst. Then for, f for video side, it's more of a 4 out of 10, and I just explained that. Now, if we combine those together, we get... Oh. Well, then. All right, then. 10 out of 20. All right, then. I guess I'll take it, then. That's a camera that we just killed. <laughs> but no, on an, all real, on, a, on an all serious note, though, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something out of this. I mean, I sure did. And I will see you guys later. But peace. All right, cool.